after spending months of academic work, there is need for students and poor pupils to have time out to rest and replenish from a stressful academic year. This vacation mania test comes with lots of peer group infiltration, exposing young people to vices capable of destroying their future if adequate care and monitoring is not taken. Stakeholders who are worried by the increased level of crime appeal to parents to engage their words and skills and domestic activities during the holiday to disabuse their minds from vices that are detrimental. I don't know what is happening with the children, the court matter. Make government help us put eye. We we'll advise the parents, say make them try, engage them for lesson, maybe some summer lesson, or if they want them to learn, like those university one, like my own, as if not trade, more go learn. We buy us as when they learn trade, like as this strike this, they should go and learn trade. Make parents try. Some children no go grill, but make them try. Now still our children, we we'll advise them, beg them. If not, we beg self, we beg them. Say it's for your own good. Though. We should engage them in. Number one, lessons, especially those ones in primary. They should not allow them to roam about. They should arrange for private teachers that can do them uh, seriously on lessons. That will help. Then make mothers they engage them, both parents shall make it engage them for household chores. Make them know they to go outside. Engage them after their housework. Make them they sit down, they read their books for house. Money day. Put them for lessons. But make it be around the area because going outside, then they go see other evil societies. Then Others of the opinion that parents should pray for their children during this period to build their spiritual life. Firstly, parents should show love to their children. If a child today offends you, don't be ash on that child. Sit that child and talk to that child as your best friend. That will make the child to reason well than to be bully on the children. Stakeholders, however, stress the need for parents to teach their children morals and equally monitor the kind of friends they keep and the side they visit on internet to reduce their involvement in cyber crimes and make the world a better place. In Yenegoy. Good day viewers. You're welcome to Enoe River State Dialogue, the platform where we weekly sensitize, enlightened, orientate and reorientate the populace on government policies, programs and activities. In doing that, we consciously get the feedback for government to pro properly fine-tune our policies to suit the people for which the policies are actually formulated. Parenting is a whole lot of responsibility that can never be overemphasized. As a matter of fact, parenting could be likened, you know, to planting a garden or a farm. After planting a garden or a farm, you need to water, you need to weed, you need to put your eyes there until the harvest time comes. No wonder the Holy Book said, it said, when men slept, the enemy came in and so tears. Now, when you abandon parenting, when you take your I off your child world for one day, for two weeks, for one month, the consequence, you know, may be very, very grievous. Viewers, as you know, now we are in the summer holidays. We are one, be one week or more into the summer holidays. And so children are at home. You know, there is a need to engage them, there is a need to put an eye on them, there is a need to, you know, recreate wine among <coughs> wine with them, you know. So, viewers, today we'll be discussing the topic. We have crafted this topic to suit the time and the purpose, engaging children during holidays. And give with us today to do justice to this program is Pastor I.J. Goggle. She's a woman of many facets. She's a pastor, a singer, an author. She has been trained and worked as a human resource personnel with Love World Mission Support. And she's an author of many books. Presently, she's a pastor with Champs Christian Gavin. You are welcome, Pastor I.J. Thank you so much, my pleasure. All right. We also have here with us Mr. Charles Aka. 
He's a principal with Faith Baptist College, Port Harcourt. Saria, welcome to our Thank program. Thank you, my pleasure. All right. We also have with us Mrs. Anya Uruma Okamaka, PhD. She's a child educator and a researcher. She's currently a lecturer with University of Port Harcourt. Thank you, Ma, for making it out today with us. You're welcome. Viewers, at this point, I'm going to introduce my co-anchor for today. I believe you people saw her, you know, our last week dialogue. She's no other person than Mrs. Ifoma Oledibwe. She'll be co-anchoring with me today. You're welcome. And my name is Abiye Senebo. I'm your anchor, co-anchor today for National Air for the Enoe River State eh? Dialogue. I, sir, let me start with you as a principal. I, as a principal of school, you have regular contact with, you know, what's and uh, uh, children. I want to start now. What does it mean to engage children, you know, during the holidays? What is it all about? That's fine, a good one, mm. and a timely discourse mm. by your agency. Uh, to engage children during the holiday, uh, the word engage is an actual mm. word. Mm. Okay. It tells us to occupy them, get their attention, properly uh, make them positively useful during the holiday. Mm. So to engage children during the holiday is to meaningfully and purposefully occupy them, give them what to do, so that they are not idle. Remembering that during the school hours and school days, very early in the morning, they are up, parents prepare them up, they go to school, be they in primary or secondary school, very early. So they, they have been a routine during the school days. So when there is holiday, the, these children are resting from the regular schooling activities. So sometimes, more or less, we leave them idle at home. And that is where they get in contact with many vices around, which is becoming very prevalent in our time. Okay. So it is it is necessary and very important that we engage these children meaningfully, purposefully, deliberately to achieve certain things in their lives. Um, let me just a follow-up question. Engaging our children during holidays. Should it be limited to just uh, uh, the, the ones in nursery or primary or the tertiary, you know, tertiary? You know, if in fact because so in as much as the person is called a child, <laughs> the word child or children is uh, going legally by United Nations uh, Child Rights Act. Mm -hmm. A child is one, someone that is below the age of 18. Someone that is still dependent on parents, guardians, or anyone who can't take decision for himself or herself due to lack of experience or maturity. So, from nursery, primary, secondary, tertiary, in as much as they are dependent on someone. That person is a child. Mm. So it's not just for the ch not just school ch children or primary school children. It's for everyone who is a child. All right, Ma. I want to ask you, first of all, um, these children, how can they be engaged? In what ways can we engage them? All right. Um, I just want to say thank you so much for having me here on the stage, on um, the studio on set with you. Um, there are different ways we can engage our children. You know, first of all, you have to remember that having them during school periods, um, when school school is in session, they wake up in the morning. You get them to wake up like some by 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. and then get them dressed and quickly they are off to school and then after that you you are off to work or into your business it doesn't really give you enough time to be able to 
you know, um, kind of interact with them. So first of all, we, we start, when you talk about engaging the children, I think it has to start with you connecting with them, having enough time to connect with them. Because those school sessions, they don't give you enough time. When they are back from school, they are to do the assignments, and before you know it is night, they have to sleep and all that. Then wake up the next day, and the whole like rat race starts, continues. So it starts with you. This is a time that, as a parent or as a guardian, you should take out the time, uh, take out some time to connect with your children or your words, you know, and try to listen to them. You know, try to engage, try to kind of form, um, get yourself to interact with them, have this relationship, I and mean, trying to bond. That bonding is very important. So you start with that, because if you can bond with them, then they can ask you questions, they can be free with you. Many children or uh, kids that we're looking at, or even up to the age of 17, even if they're in school or university, whatever, you find that they're not able to ask, some of them, they're, they're unable to ask their parents questions because they're like afraid. They talk to others more than they talk to their parents. That's because that relationship is not there. But you should seek to have your child, I mean, seek to be your child's best friend. I tell you that children, they really crave for attention. Most times they crave for attention. They want you to get to know what they are doing. You know, a child, you dress up a child and wants you to tell, the child wants you to tell him or her that you're looking beautiful, you're looking good, you're smart, you're intelligent and all that. They are craving for attention. So you start from there, get to, get to bond with them, get to relate with them, get to ask them questions. Let them be free, let them feel free with you so that they don't look for friendship outside when they can find it with you. But if they can find friendship with you, then it's easier for them to relate. If they make mistakes, you can correct them, you know, from the standpoint of love. They will see that daddy loves me or auntie loves me, you know, if, you, if, if you're just a guardian. They will know that with that love, they know that you are correcting them or you're directing them in the right way. It doesn't mean you should, um, you shouldn't discipline when necessary. You know, Bible says to train up a child in the way he should go. When he grows up, he will not depart from it. So most times, people don't get to have their kids disciplined from that childhood age. So when the child gets so big, like 17, 18, can't even respond, you know. <laughs> that I'm trying to tell you that there is a time you can really discipline a child, and then there's a time you have to be begging the child. <laughs> Do you understand? There's a time you can be, you know, um, really on the child, as in your frown alone can pass a message. But there's a time when it gets so, when the child grows out of that stage, that you have to be appealing. And you don't want to get to the point where you are appealing, yeah. where you should be giving instruction. Yeah. So start with that. That bonding is the first place to start with. With that, you can even discover their interests, what they love to do. Is this child good at computer, ICT, things like that? Or this child, is this child good at things that has to do with food? What are his skills and that you can develop? That's the reason God committed them to our trust. To be able to, you know, like he said, it's, it's like planting a seed. To be able to train the child, you are planting a garden. So you tend the garden, you water the garden. So the child is a seed that is growing. So you need to know when the child needs water. You need to know when the child needs to be fed and what kind of food the child needs to be fed. So what kind of information should you expose this child to at this age? What kind of training should you expose this child to at this age? So it just starts from born. Uh, 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 doc, uh, doc, let me let me let me come to you with this. You know, from from the introduction, what you do is is it really necessary, you know, or vital, you know, to engage children outside school, you know, work academic environment. You know, why should these children really engage? Thank you very yes, much. Because of it, let me just say, considering the long period they spend at school, one of the things that they should be allowed to relax, you know, to, you know, at least for them, but is, is it really necessary to yes. engage? It's really necessary to engage them outside the school setting mm -hmm. or the school environment. Yeah. In as much as children are to explore and to know areas and environment, it helps, it's part of engagement. Mm -hmm. You take them to visitations, yeah. people, places that are, will really conquer morals to them, not just pleasure per se. Mm -hmm. There are areas you will take the children this holiday period, do you understand? Take them to maybe shops where they will learn a lot of things, maybe crafts, skills. You expose them. 
So this time around, girls like my daughter, she's now on camp. They're learning some things in the camp, the church camp. When I answer seminars on Bible peace, training them on morals, bringing them up, telling them how to take hygiene and all that. So this is not this part of extracurriculum activities. They're no longer really doing classwork, going to school. They're not exploring and they're going to meet friends. And so the, yeah. This is social skills. Yeah. Friends from different parts now. No, they will come two, three days, you will learn from me, I will learn from you, we expose them to various skills and maybe communication skills and all that. That is why it's good to allow the child to go beyond the school environment or the school setting. So it will expose the child you know, to learn a lot for the betterment and benefit of the society. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's good. All right, sir, let me come to you, principal. As a principal and someone in the school environment, what do you have to say relating to children that are still being engaged uh, um, for summer lesson, tax summer lesson? Just like Pastor have said, he said a time of bonding, and the uh, and doctor said a time of learning skills. What do you have to say with more, um, summer lessons? Yeah, they continue in learning things academically as a principal. Okay. Um, holiday engagement via summer lesson in a school environment shouldn't necessarily be all academics. Okay. Uh, by contemporary findings and research today, Vocational education is becoming a necessity globally. Uh, educational planners are beginning to think, particularly in Nigeria today, elsewhere in the developed world, it's already there yeah. that secondary education, tertiary education, and have deliberately made provision for vocational education. Yeah. What is the reason? The formal academic knowledge have, has been discovered not to adequately meet the citizens' need, yes. the, the, the contemporary time, knowing fully well that most of the curriculum in our higher institutions don't most time provide equipment or equipping for the student, for the learner, to be self-employed. We go to the universities, we come out with bachelors mm. of various kinds, <laughs> filing on looking for employment. Yes. And you and I know that employment is not there. Yeah. It's not there, particularly in our environment, Nigeria. So the summer lesson in the school system or any other location, it will not be the school system. Okay should be tailored towards vocational education. Yeah. When we say vocational education, we are simply talking of entrepreneurial skills that can enhance the opportunities of the students, of the children. They can be in the school setting, if you are talking of the schools, doing summer lesson, it will not be social studies, CRS, integrated science or basic science and technology, the new name today. It must not be English and mathematics. Mm -hmm. It must not be physics, chemistry, biology. Yes, it must not be civic education, yeah. government, history, and all whatnot. Yes. Teach these children certain skills, vocational skills, or what we call hard skills. In cooking, <coughs> Very necessary. You see, today, it, yeah. the food industry is an easy business anybody can get into yeah. and make a living, whether you're a man, whether you're a woman. And we shouldn't say these children are children, they don't know anything. They know much. So, from primary school age, expose them to these skills at home. So, during holidays like this, send these children to country institutions where they can spend two weeks, three weeks, okay. learning certain catering skills. And you don't know how far that will take them. When they get into the higher institution with this skill, they can 
make some money by yeah. preparing some snacks. Mm -hmm. Have a stand yeah. within their lecture hall area. Good enough, our learning environment in higher institutions today, that if you go there to the learning classroom areas, block halls, learning halls, you will see various stands. Either you are doing um, stationary sales, you are taking the snacks and some drinks and all of that. A child that is properly put through this can acquire such a skill that can let him or her provide a charge card, provide some money for textbooks, yeah. if not the main school fees. Exactly. Thereby relieving parents of the entire, entire cost mm -hmm. of so educating. I'm afraid I have to, we'll have to interrogate a little bit because our correspondence is on standby from Oba Ibema and Donnie local government. We are Anthony Ozuriku is on standby. Anthony Ozuriku, please let's take it up while listening. Good morning, Abiyan Senibo. This is Mr. Ozuriku Uz reporting from Onega. With me here is Mr. Patrick. So our topic of discussion is engaging to the dream holiday. What is your take on this? Thank you very much, Mr. Um, engaging children during holiday is very, very important as it is an opportunity where children can acquire skills. These skills are different from the normal academic studies, which will, which will help the child expand his individual knowledge. This can also help the child um, share new experiences with his friends whenever there is one. Uh, the second question is, what is your advice to parents during this holiday? Okay, thank you sir. Holiday is a period where parents are fortunate to spend time with their children. So I'm going to advise parents that they should make use of the holiday by having personal relationships with their children, trying to know about the new traits children have developed, and trying to see how they can improve their children or cut out some of those bad behaviors. Thank you, Mr. Patrick. Back to you, Mr. Gibbs. Uh, thank you, Ozuroke, there for that uh, report. Just before we join our correspondents there, you, you know, we're actually talking about uh, uh, the <coughs> The, the engagements, you know, uh, and all of that. Uh, so I want you to round up that so that we can actually move on. So, yeah. like I have said earlier, some of the vocational area they could also engage these children is the computer world. Mm. You have the coding today, computer coding. Yeah. You have the graphics. You have the robotics. Mm. And this is somebody said that today's children, the 21st century children are internet natives. <laughs> they are internet natives. And that is true. How do we mean by that? What do we mean by that? These children, there's anything you are telling, even at home, even while they're on holiday, yeah. you hardly get their attention outside this phone. So, expose them to meaningful knowledge in the aspects of the internet that will also be for their skill, enhance income. Mm. We cannot throw away this because the economy is biting hard. So it's not just about the academic subject alone during summer holiday or during the holiday. So they should be engaged meaningfully in such and hard skills. Yeah. All right. With these um, skills that you're talking, the one that caught my attention when you mentioned cooking, is what anybody can survive with, yeah. including students. So I want to ask, is there age brackets on these skills, whether it's coding or cooking or any other? Is there age brackets of, okay, for people that are up to this age, we can start teaching you how to cook. And you mentioned about sending them to a catering institution, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So Short this courses. second question aligned to it. Does environment determine their learning processes? Their learning effect, environment, whether it's at home. Because normal, we can say, okay, since I'm a mother, I know how to cook. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me start teaching you. They is suggesting of going to catering institution. Does environment affect their learning status? It's both ways. Okay. The home environment is the beginning point. Yeah. I'm a man. Uh, my mother groomed me from the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to say, as a man, there's no food I can't cook. Wow. Because I didn't go to any catering school from home. I know how to cut the vegetable. I know how to cut okra without chopping stick. 
and in a few minutes I'm done with a bowl of okra. These are skills that children should be exposed to. Have. So it starts from home. Home environment is number one factor. Now, when the foundation is laid there, this student, this child, naturally flows into it to an advanced level of contemporary cuisines. Uh, how is it done? What is this? And all of that. That's when the catering centers, catering institutes come in now. So the family, both the, both home environment, social social environment are all relevant to achieving that aspect of. Uh, okay. Now, uh, the, uh, Pastor, yeah. let me let me take you on this. Now, apart from, you know, apart from learning and form recreation, you know, engaging them because yeah. they are learning all through this time. So it's expected that some recreative that, that you know activities should come in for them to unwind, sort of. Now, what other, apart from learning and reading, what other values are expected from parents to inculcate, you know, in a child during all of this? Um, when you look around, let me start with the obvious. Mm. In this, in the community or in our society today, mm. I don't know, uh, but I think it's almost everywhere. Like you wake up and you want to just go buy something from the next the supermarket next by, uh, close by you find out that you see all, all manner of um, attire, outfits. People are almost, you know, like nudity is being promoted right now. So I think apart from learning those um, recreational, I mean, getting recreational things and then other disciplines, some of the things you need to get the children have, some of the, some of the values like um, dressing, how they should look, they need to inculcate that, you know, it, it starts from home, just like what he said. It's not what you teach people. When they go to school, they have outfit that they wear. You'll be surprised. Let me tell you, if you have a child that's like 16, 15 in the university, some people, some of them, they have what they call campus wear. Then they have the ones that they wear at home. When they come back home, what they wear at home is different from what they wear when they get to school. <laughs> I know a parent that said she just one day decided to you know dash into school inside into the campus and to it's check on the child surprises. and I mean a surprise visit that was a, that and then saw the child I mean she was amazed at what her daughter was wearing so if somebody told her that your daughter dressed for this she may not have even believed or something like that because the child you know these children they they are like sometimes they, they do that they think they are light light years ahead of you. So you need to be f ahead of them, really. You need to be. You need to think ahead and be faster. So something like dressing, if 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 what the person, what you try to get them to wear, you, you need to let them know what to wear at home. That every dressing has a place. You know, this man um, of blessed memory, Miles Moore, always said. Um, he said, eh, when purpose is not known, eh, abuse is inevitable. Yeah. There are clothes that are nightwears. And they will be beautiful at night. If you wear them in the morning hours or wear them to office, you are abusing that outfit. You understand the purpose of it. So you have to let them know why people should wear what they wear. These days, you see people wearing what they should wear at night. They wear it on the street in the morning. They just wear something like a a t-shirt that is a bit long, not even passing the tie or getting to there. Just wear it on the street because they are seeing it everywhere. So this is a time to tell them that you're seeing it every day, everywhere it doesn't mean it's right, you know. So such things, such values have to be inculcated into them so that when they go out, you are sure of what they are doing, you know. This day's peer pressure is very, I mean, most kids are affected by that. But if you if you give your child the attention and get them to these areas that get these um, teenagers or young adults, you know, get the attention, um, if you get to educate your child properly, they will not, the peer pressure, they will have some great resistance against it. I, I Somebody told me about um, integrated science, that these days when you look at what they study in integrated science, when you come to like reproduction, most of the times, principal is here, I don't know if I'm wrong, he'll be correct <laughs> me. Most of the times, what they are teaching you is um, sex training, how to avoid getting pregnant, which is different from <laughs> educating your child and letting the child know that 
abstinence. Yes, the value of abstinence. Yeah. You have to let the child know the value of abstinence. So with that, the child is not trying to I mean, avoid pregnancy. The child knows that not doing it at this time. There's nothing wrong with sex. It's about the context of the sex. There's a time for it. Praise God. Oh, oh. I, I think I'm it's stressed allowed. right it's now. <laughs> Pardon me. Yeah. So there's nothing wrong with that, but the child has to understand there is time for everything. You have to fast sex at this age. If you go into it, it will ruin your future. Give the child a bigger picture of how her future should look like you know, about, and tell the child, if you do this, you want to come back and have this um, cut shirt instead of having it, it's having a smooth sail. So things like that, dressing, um, morals, and all that should be part of what we should get these children to imbibe and understand at this time. That's education. Thank you. Thank you, IJ. That was a good one. Yes. Right now, we'll be joining our correspondent from Andoni local government area. Mr. Samuel Akiba, please take it up if you are on. Mrs. Sifoma Ledube, presenter, NOA River State Dialogue. This is Mr. Samuel Akiba, Community Orientation and Mobilization Officer in charge of Andorra Local Government Area, reporting from UNCO Council Headquarters. Our topic today is engaging children during the holidays. I have here with me Mrs. Blessing Emmanuel Ego. She is an educationist. In fact, she is the headmistress of Community Primary School 1 in Go. She is here to talk more on this topic. Madam. I am Mrs. Blessing Ema Welego. I'm here to say something about engaging children during holidays. Engaging children during the holidays will make them not to be lazy and join the social verses. Children can be engaged by sending them to lesson. They can be engaged by sending them to acquire skills. Skills like tailoring, shoe making, hairdressing, computer lesson, tailoring, and so on, which will help them in their future. The lesson will help them in the class during reopening. Thank you, Madam. We have heard it all from her that it is very necessary to engage children during the holidays so that they will not be idle. The idle man, they say, is the devil's function. Over to you, Mrs. Sifoma Elodim. Uh, thank you, Ashiba, there for that uh, report. In the same way, we're going to join uh, our correspondents, who's also in on standby from Abu Abdullah local government. Then, Hawaii, you're on. Please take it off. Good morning, Mr. Abiy Senebo. This is Hawaii, the Ben Uturu, reporting from Abu Abdullah local good. government area of the states. Uh, this morning, we are going to discuss on the issue engaging children during holidays. We have uh, a regular discussant here with us this morning, Engineer Henry Joseph. And your Honorable Joseph is here uh, to throw light on this issue this morning. And your Henry, you're welcome to the show once thank again. Thank you so much. Yes, engaging children positively during holidays is a good one. You know, it affords parents the opportunity to define career paths for their children. Taking myself, for example, like my first son just finished his um, you know, work and he has expressed a desire to be a medical practitioner. So, what we do is we enroll him in a pharmacy to learn dispensary. And the siblings, the younger ones, who are not to that age, all we did was we allowed them one hour lesson a week, keeping abreast of what to expect in the next academic calendar. And they have time for siesta, they have time to also do their work, household chores, and also time to play. I think parents will do this way. If you do so, it will really help to bring better children in society. Thank you. Uh, over to you, Mr. Abiy Senebo at the studios. Thank you, Engineer Henry Joseph, for coming on the show. Thank you. Oh, thank you for your report there. Um, in, in a bit, we're going to open the telephone lines for people to also, you know, get to us through that uh, media. But before we, we we open the telephone line, let me just take this uh, with uh, Madam. I just want to take the line this with you. <laughs> this is very very important because we're talking about engaging the children and. 
you know, is engaging the children who are talking mainly outside the school environment. Outside the school environment. And sometimes outside the home because these are two regular places the children see. They sleep at home, they go to school and they come back. So it's traveling. It's traveling, you know, to the village or outside uh, the regular environment going to other city could be, you know, as part of engaging the children. Yes, really. Taking them outside the, env- the immediate environment where they're living or the school setting is part of engaging them. It's a very good part. By the time you take them outside the setting, they're going to learn the culture of that place, culture and diversity. For example, during the holiday forthcoming December, I'm taking my own children to the village. You know, half year where I come from, we, have, we are people of culture and tourism. We have what we call age grade. It's a very good, wonderful ceremony. You see the way they dress, the age grade helps the community develop the community without the contribution of government coming in. By age grade, you know, the children will know that this is what is happening and is there age by age. At a certain age, like 60, you are to stop community contribution. And that particular age grade will give you an assignment or a project. Like let's say you tie the road. You set up a good market for the for the village. There are um, pipe bone water, schools to build, hall and all that. These are cultures and you see their ties and the way they dress, they'll be giving certificates, it's a very big ceremony, two day ceremony. So taking the children outside the school setting or the immediate environment where they're living to also see cultures and you know imitate which contributes to the society is part of engaging them. So from time to time, parents should endeavor to take their children beyond where they are staying. Take them around, also friends, not only your own area, other your friends' area, let them see what is happening, see sides, so that at the end, it will contribute mostly to the development of the society. Yeah, thank you. At this point, we're going to open up the phone lines. Please, you know, avail yourself the opportunity. Use that video to also get back, you know, to us. Now the phone lines are they'll be displayed on the screen, but all the same, I'm going to read them out to you now. It's plus two three four nine one six six five eight seven three five five. I'll take it again. Plus two three four nine one six six five eight seven three five five please when you call the first thing you do just your name your location where you're coming from and then your comment straight keep it straight and please we're discussing for enlightenment and for sensitization so you know put it you know straight don't do don't go to any unsubstantiated claims and uh, you know don't be very very uh, mind the language you use you know thank you and so you know before we open up, you know, the phone lines, you know, the uh, doctor was just telling us the effect of traveling, that traveling, you know, outside the environment is one of the ways to engage uh, uh, children. Now, I, 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 I want to take you this on the uh, principle. Now, why engaging children? We are talking about skills. We are talking about all manner of things. And these things are not free. And it is expected that during the holidays, the parents will want to use that time to, you know, recoup some funds, save some funds, save money because you know immediately after that, then you know yes. going back to school fees and all of that begins to, you know, to start. Now, you know how how would you manage the situation so that you're not financially stressed? So how do you create a balance in all of this? Much as you have to engage them. And the school will open and they will go back to school and they will need to pay school fees. And you know, children, they are growing very fast. The shoes, you know, before you know, you're buying new shoes, you're buying new uniform and all of that. How do you create a balance? I think you know, Marcel can go on with us for that. <laughs> if he's in school, 
the worst two things. He's in school, the worst two things. But all the same, no, no, but, but, but all the same, we are parents. You understand? In as much as we are into school, we also have children. We are parents. Yeah. 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 What would the school authority say? But you, in your mind, because you have a child, you you are on that status of maybe in the management meeting. Let's allow them to bring their children. She may not know, as a parent, that school is able to accommodate someone who doesn't have maybe for the first week. So that was why I want to. You want to get her feelings. <laughs> How? Oh, oh, please let me just come in a little. Yeah. Having been in school, my colleague is here. Mm-hmm. You said uh, she may not be aware of maybe bringing the child the first two or three weeks. But at least at good school, we have uh, what we call, uh, we, you give them letter, uh, um, newsletters. Newsletters. Do you understand? The newsletter, everything will be recorded. So at least it's not at the beginning, as soon as we begin school, that the child will be restricted from coming to school. We'll give some. Uh, um, window period. Of at least a month. Do you understand? So. Yes, as a good parent, you should also plan ahead. Whether you're a businessman or you're a suicide, once you're a parent, you have challenges that is coming up, at least, and you have something to do. I think that has to do with um, budgeting. Yes, you know, plan. Budgeting is very important when it has to do when we talk about um, getting the school fees you know, ready before the time. I, I remember. Um, I have uh, sometimes, I want to say something, there was something that you talked about initially, and that has to do with um, traveling. You know, I want parents through this um, sensitization to know that children are not commodities. So most times, some parents just want to. I remember a lady I, I was trying to invite to church, and she told me, I won't be in church, I can't come because I need to take my children to the village. I was like, ah, okay, okay, it's holiday. He said, because they, they're making me talk. They're making me talk. I want to go and send them to my mom. Let them make her talk. And I'm like, what, an, uh, what a motive, you know? It's not bad sending your children or getting them to travel on holidays, but it's important to know why you're doing that. Sorry, if it's... Sorry, let me just sit there. Okay. Hello? Hello? Yeah, hello. Your name and where you're calling from? Your name, your name, please. Hello, are you there? Can you hear me? I'm Ellis calling from Portacourt. Okay, Ellis, we can hear you loud and clear. Um, uh, your contribution, sir. Okay, my uh, I want to ask a question. My question will go to the uh, teachers. If they are aware that they are teachers and the principal, how mm-hmm. How do we how do we manage for over six months now our children in the university? In the public universities in Nigeria, have been on strike. They have been at home because of also strike. How do you manage this? Because it's a very long time. A situation where we don't know when the when the strike is ending. You ask them to do this, they get tired and all that. How do you manage? How do you engage the meaningful? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. I'm part of the ASU strike is affecting me. I'm at home. <laughs> I really, it still is really eating me up, but by God's grace, I'm surviving. On the side of our students, which they have been calling me, Mama, when are we resuming and all that? That's okay, keep on praying. And then uh, ask us to touch the federal government. We are demanding our needs and it must be met. So you can engage them, there are various things you can engage, which I've been telling them on Facebook. If you open, we say, make sure you are engaged in one skill or the other. Thank God at that level, they're no longer other than a child. You can get something doing, no? You can get a skill. Uh, at least I, I invited one of my students that came to paint my new house. Wow. And the three students. Mm-hmm. You no, know, I he painted the flat very well. I said, yes. He said, Ma, how much will you give me? So I will give you money. How much? Tell me the amount. In a sense, I'm, I'm your lecturer does not mean that you do it free. Yeah. At least I'll give you something. From there, you pay school fees. Yeah. You understand? So they should learn to acquire one skill, engage themselves in one of the ones of their interests. At this age, they are no longer kids per se. So you parents also should also help us to make sure that at least you reduce them from these uh, vices 
and courtesy by making sure that they are well engaged to learn one skill or the other that also add value to their certificates. Thank you. Yes, uh, if I may also add, mm. meaningfully engaging these children, the university students on, at home, compulsorily sent on holiday mm. by the uh, 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 umpires between the government and the university lecturers. You see, when a person is busy and meaningfully making money, he or she will not be counting how long they've been at home, not be in the lecture room. So, the, to that parent asking this question, just like our lecturer has said, the important thing is let your daughter, your son, use this period as a skill building period yes. to learn how to make money to enable him or her finish through the school. It is true that the years of study will be elongated as a result of the strike. But when you're able to engage the child properly and he or she is earning a skill that will help add income to the family purse, you will not feel the pain of much expenditure as a result of added years in uh, education. Yes. At this point, uh, we have to take some comments from our uh, live streamers. You know, the, 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 the message are much here. Yeah. But well, God will help us to do justice to them. Now, this one is from uh, Adus Glads. Spiritual and physical vacuum is a risk and danger if children are not engaged during holidays. Thank you, Adus, for your comments here. Uh, thank you. This is one This one is from Bridget Idemio. Parents should endeavor to devote more time into engaging their children in domestic skills to enrich the old man front. This one is from my mom. The children should be engaged properly during this holiday period via boot camps, learning of trade, etc. etc. Thank you, Boma, for your comment there. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, this is from Peter Ikabe. The holiday is a good opportunity for the improving or reinforcing academic skills of the previous term and also preparing them for the new session. From White Cadre Command, mm. leadership skill, many of us complain about lack of good leaders mm. in our society. During this time, behavior modification and discipline can be deeply taught. Mm. From Ben Owayo too, parenting involves meaningful engagement. Mm. Therefore, parents should endeavor to engage especially during holidays. Now, this one is from Bekimo Williams. Engaging children during holidays in academic activities is never a waste and should be encouraged by all parents and caregivers. Thank you, Bekimo, for your thoughts, dear. Thank you, thank you, thank you. From Bridget Demo, parents should endeavor to devote more time to engaging their children in domestic skill to enrich the home front. Mm. This one is from, um, okay, uh, Douglas Madisi. Holiday is a good time to engage children in creative activities as to keep their memories alive. Mm. Thank you, thank you for, uh, Douglas, for your thoughts there. Then from Bridget Demo also, the amusement parks should have modern equipment that will attract the attention of children and even the environment most favorable to them. This one is from Jude Imba. It is very important for children to be engaged during these summer holidays for obvious reasons. The holiday is long enough for the kids to be left alone on their own. So it is necessary to engage it is it is necessary to engage in Bible classes so that the whole holiday is not uh, wasted. Thank you very much, Julinda, for your thoughts there. This one is from Leka Umejuru. Children during this holiday should be engaged in learning of skills. The economy is getting tougher. Skills acquisition is very, very necessary. I agree with you. I agree with you. Thank you for your thoughts. Then from Chinwe Opara, we cannot undermine the power of engagement in transforming the human mind in resolving and clarifying contradictory issues. Children should always be engaged by their parents as the gap between them 
is too wide in Nigeria. Uh, this one is from Blessing Jumbo. Summer lesson is good, but today's economy has turned into business area with high fees. You know, we discussed this. He said, why we have to engage mm -hmm. them, mm -hmm. the money we spent, mm -hmm. vis a vis the money we're going to pay when the school budget, yes, yeah. need to be, yeah. need to be, need to be planned out. Budget. Yeah, I think uh, this thing we will discuss them, you know. Uh, in Okikorobia, please leave out traveling for now due to insecurity <laughs> in the country. Nowhere is safe, even if it's such a program. Oh, wow. I thank you for, you know, for enlightening us on that. God bless you for that thoughts there. This one is from Samuel Archibald. Growing up, children are always inquisitive, and, you know, eager, and desirous to learn for their development. So do not need I do not need idle moments. There is therefore the need to engage them during the holidays. Thank you for your thoughts there. Yeah. yeah, then finally, we are coming um, from Mbajit. Mm. He said, parents, why engaging their works during this holiday season mm. should be very mindful and focused. This is the time when immoral activities is being promoted. Mm -hmm. The period when schools are in section, more attention is being given to the children, mm -hmm. unlike during summer lessons. It is a period when predators are waiting for their victims Therefore, it is very important for parents to make out time to check on their children wherever they are doing their lessons. Children will be well behaved if they are aware that they are being checked by their parents, yes. than when they are left alone to pilot their affairs or check. Oh, thank so, you, thank you, Judimba, for that comment. Yeah. Now, let me let me see this. You see, much as we want to engage our children during the holidays. You know, I, I, I want to believe that there's a whole lot of planning in, 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 in all of this. Yeah. Now, there are situations where, yes, children should learn skills while they want to Now, you put the, his or her in a skill to learn a skill for six months. Okay. Why they, I mean, for six weeks, for okay. example. Why the holiday, I mean, uh, the holiday is four weeks. Now, while the, the child is in this skill, the school resumes. What happens? Is it that this, the, the child is going to abandon that skill learning and go back to school, or is it that the children will, the, the child will use out of school hour to learn it, or weekends? How do you balance this? Because you would have paid money, you know, for that purpose and all of that. How do we balance all of this? You know, that's this another planet, you know. Okay. Uh, yeah. Learning is a continuous process. Mm, yeah. It doesn't end. Mm. Uh, once the school reopens, the child is expected to go back to the school setting. Okay. Another holiday will come up. Okay. It will continue from here. Um, where it starts. Yeah, but that means you, you should have um, an agreement with the body or whoever, the company that is organizing yes. the program. So if it's such that can accommodate that the child comes after school has resumed, maybe come in the evening to continue, then that would be perfect. But if that's not the case, I guess there should be a way to work around it. It's all, it's all about planning and uh, yeah, yeah, like a, having an agreement. You know, so we are we are winding down for I time. Have a, a question for the educator, okay. Okay. for the child educator, relating to what she said. You know, from from her talk, we get about sex education, which is very bad time. I I need your contribution towards that, and also. She mentioned a vital thing concerning bonding and relationship of parents and child. Let's assume a working class mother or a father who goes to work, come back and leave How do they balance the time okay. of when the child? But the first one, I need you more contribution because one day we may get other ways that we can watch out for our children. She talked about sex education, bonding, relationship, dressing, and all that. Yeah. You're welcome. Another issue now, as a working class mother, father, you know that you have children at home. Okay. And uh, if you're working and making millions in your company, in your office, but at the end of the day, you, you, are, you don't have anywhere to invest it, or you're investing it to produce nuisance, I think you're, 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 you're making nonsense at the yeah. end of the day. So as a parent, you should make out time to take up your leave. Okay. Or at least reduce your working hours with your office, okay. especially during the holiday. Okay. Having in mind to go and be a role model okay. to your children, okay. so that you spend time with them, 
you see, monitor their language, their communication skills. Allow them to say those rubbish before you, you correct the rubbish. Yeah. Because we have a theory, two theories that say, Bandura theory is a learning by imitation and learning by doing. Whom do you imitate it? It's for you. Yeah, yeah. You are the role model. So you have to curtail your hours in your office or your shopping place or whatever to go and see to the children, monitor them, interact with them, communicate with them, watch them closely. Do you understand? Now you will be able to bring good from the part. Yeah. So don't spend all your time, all your day hustling, making money. Then coming back home, what are you going? The, the products are not it. So you have to work on yourself. It should be a major part of what you're planning or whatever you're doing, not just yes. money, I, you know, dropping them at the crash. I, 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 like I, I, I want us, you know, we, for lack of time now, I want us, now with the level of insecurity in the country, you know, I want us to take turns, you know, what advice would you give to organization churches, you know, that engage in our children on the day camps? I want you to really take join us on that yeah. contribution of what Mr. Nkorobia said on yeah. on the on the platform of the comment that yeah. there's no need of traveling. Family, family. So join it with that time. Yeah. So what we know what advice do we need to give churches organization that organize camp, boot camps and camps now? Because there's so much insecurity. You know, when camps are organized, the children are coming together, people are coming together. It would be a soft target for yeah. these people. Yeah. So what advice do we have to ask round up? You know, let's just take a talk one more minute. Well, well, I can advise in as much as there are insecurity all over now, churches can organize the camp right where they are, yeah. that may be extending it to maybe far areas. Those are, for people in Port Harcourt, you now say go to Onega or go to Bayasa, where they will be trapped somewhere. I believe the churches in Port Harcourt can make up the setting and have the camp there, the seminar, the workshop, the training to avoid going beyond the. Yeah. yeah. So, what would be our yeah. timing? Timing is of essence in terms of security situation now when you want to hold some of these camps during holidays. Timing has to do with having information, knowing the, what I call the security temperature yeah. of the environment at a given time, whether it is safe. Even at the heart of the city as this, anything can still happen when it's wrongly timed. So timing should be important, should be put into uh, cognizance when planning such camps. Secondly, the location of that camp should be secured, at least at a human level. It should be an environment where there is fence and gates, where people coming in and going out is being monitored. There are people in charge of security in the camp. Thirdly, the campers should be giving security tips while I'm on site. That is, you have living home to this camp. These are the measures you have to take to ensure that you are safe while in the camp. Because sometimes, even among the campers, they could be infiltrators who are agents. I mean, not everybody. So, uh, orientation should be given to the campers themselves. These are some of the measures we can take while doing camping for children during the holidays. I think they quite um, covered. They covered most of the issues there. Um, the security, having um, maybe getting the police or the other security agencies around, or some of them that are organized by the church or whatever organization that is handling the boot camp or the, the, the yeah the boot camp at the time. So it's very important that they do, they don't take it lightly. Invest in security, and then the timing, like you said, if you. are if if they are the type maybe your your, your kind of camp or the camping you're doing is the type they have to come and pick the child back home and then you should have a particular person that comes to pick the child it's not just anybody that should be able to come and pick your child that shouldn't be allowed and then the timing that they close you don't go and close camp or such um, have such environment I mean, uh, activity that they close by seven when it's getting dark no. Like in my church, just normally on a service days, weekly activities, we make sure we close before seven o'clock. That means when people should people should still go home when they can still see, see, even if there's no lighting in the environment. You understand where they are passing or the other way. So that's very important. Cut down on the timing that you have. Most times you can't cover everything. Just 
make deal with the time that you have and get to do things during the daytime and not night. Okay, viewers, this is where we draw the curtains for today in the River State uh, dialogue. I want to, you know, use this time to appreciate everybody that contributed, those that stream live with us. We thank you for your wonderful contribution. Those that are calling, we thank you for your contribution. And I want to thank uh, our discussant here in the studio with, you know, that made had, you know, flesh to today's uh, uh, discussion. I want to thank uh, Pastor um, Ijoma Gogo. Thank you for coming. Thank you. And I want to thank uh, Mr. Charles Aka. Sir, we, we appreciate your coming. Oh, we, we, we are not taking it for uh, granted. I want to also thank Oloama Akamaka. Akama. Okamaka. Okamaka, <laughs> sorry, for modern that name. PAD. Thank you, man, for coming. No, and I hope thank next you. time when we call you, you will also oblige. I also want to use this video to quickly thank you know the person who gave us this platform for this dialogue, our executive producer, Dr. Gaba Abari. Thank you, sir, for giving us this wonderful platform. And I also want to thank our state director, Barista Young Ayo Tamano, is the producer of the New River State Dialogue and the 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 the, 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 the HOD ICT department and the studio director, Mr. Briggs Arolete. We thank you so much, our, you know, and our able assistant, Boba Amade. We thank you, we appreciate you. We say a very big thank you. Until we come your way again, next, you know, next week, same day, same time. My name is Abiyah Senmo, and my co-presenter, Ijoma, uh, is former Elodie Way. Until we come your way next time, please keep your eyes on your children, and please show love to somebody. Goodbye. Thank you.